In this video, we will have a look at how to retrieve the data that we saved now in the contact table online. So you remember that we created the contact table in the previous video. We saved two values inside of that table. And now how do we get these values back? Now, just to make this contact application more real type of application, we need to do a bit more than just to get the data. So what I'm going to do is to use a recycler view to show the list of data. So you need to go to your common part there under palette and then go to that download button next to recycler view. And you'll say, OK, so that creates that recycler view library for you. And then also another thing that I'm going to use here. If you go into containers, there's also a card view. So make sure you choose the card view also. And then those two libraries will sync. So sometimes on the Windows machines, this download button stops working after the first one you clicked. So I'm just going to open up my build.gradle file for you. And these are the two lines that you must have. You must have the implementation Android support recycler view version 7. And that 28.00 must be the same as your implementation for your um, app compat so that version there and the versions that you've got there must be the same so if that download button doesn't work just type these two lines so it's the support library but that's the recycler view as well as the card view right so if those two are synced then we can start using them so what I want to do in this contact list application of ours or the activity of ours I want to go into this login form and only add one text view there I'm going to add a text view and let's just zoom in a bit, see what's going on. On that text view, I think before we do the text view, let's just go and set the background here as that primary light. Then we can see what's going on. Okay, so on this text view, I'm going to set the text views style to bold. And let's set the size a bit bigger. Let's make it 30, maybe too big, 24. Okay, let's leave it as 24. And I'm going to set the text on this as contact list and then let's set it to gravity center horizontal and maybe move it a bit from the top so I'm going to have a margin at the top of 10 right so we're going to display contact list at the top and then at the bottom we will have now the recycler view so you're going to go to comment again and you're going to drag in that recycler view directly underneath your contact list. So depending on which version you're running, it will show something here or not. But it doesn't matter as long as you see something there in the space. So the recycler view must be there and we're going to give it an ID. I'm going to call it recycler view list. So RV list, recycler view list. And then go onto that contact list again and set a bottom margin there. Let's say 15. So we add some Maybe 15 is too much. Let's make it 10 as well. Right, so that will be your recycler view. It will span the whole screen, but it will be underneath this contact list. So we're not going to set anything on the text view, so we don't need an ID for it, but we need an ID for this recycler view called RV list. Right, so let's start with the next part then. So remember, if you go back to my recycler view videos, there's three parts we need to do. First thing is we need to have a custom class and we already have the class called contact. So contact will be the class that represents every value that we place inside of this list. So we already did step number one. So step number two would be to go and create a custom layout file that will represent every element inside of that recycler view. So step number two we need to go and do. So let's go into the layout folder. I'm going to right click say new layout resource file let's call this row or contact row layout uh, remember all lowercase and you may use the underscore there and i'm going to set this as a linear layout and say okay so if anything about this recycler view is going too fast in this video remember that you can go back on my previous videos and watch the recycler view video where i do this in depth and look at all the different options that we can have right so this contact row layout will then represent every item inside of my recycler view or inside of my list so i'm going to leave it as a linear layout that's vertical and into this linear layout that's vertical i'm going to add if you go to containers again we're going to add a card view in there now inside of this card view then i'm going to add a layout but before i do that let's just set some settings for this card view 
So what I want you to do is to quickly go to any one of your other activities, like for example, login. And at the top, you'll see this import there that says XMLNS and it says res auto at the end. I want you to copy that one on any one of your XML layouts and then go back to this row layout. And we want to add this for the card view. So we're going to change app there for as a card underscore view. And now we can set a few settings here for the card view. So I'm going to say the card view, uh, we're not going to use the compact padding. So I'm going to set false there. The card views uh, elevation, we're going to set to 5 dp. The card views corner radius, I'm going to set to 5 dp. And the card views background color, we can set to the primary color. Let's just see if there's anything else. Now that's fine. So let's just use a margin then to add an all margin of 5 dp. So now currently you basically you're not going to see anything there. So what we're going to do from the start is go to the vertical linear layout and set the height to wrap the content. Then go into the card view and on the card view I'm going to add a layout, a linear layout that is horizontal. Inside this linear layout that's horizontal I'm going to drag in one text view Next to that text view, because we're working in horizontally now, next to that text view, I'm going to add a layout, which will be a linear layout that is vertical. And inside the vertical linear layout, I'm going to drag in two text views again. And there we go. So if we zoom in a bit, it looks like this currently. Okay, so what I did was just to rebuild my application and then all of these colors appeared. Right, so what we need to do next, we've got it horizontally now, these two or three text views. Uh, so what we want to do is to go into the text part and have a look at what we have here. So we've got a linear layout that is horizontal. Inside of this linear layout, we've got two things. We've got a text view and a linear layout. Forget about what is in the linear layout. So the text view, I'm going to set the width to 0 dp. And for the linear layout, I'm going to set the width also as 0 dp. And now if you look at your design, you can see that we've got the two taking up exactly the same space. Because we've set the width property of both of them to 0, the, uh, the weight property will now come into play. And you can see the weight for this one is 1 and the weight for this one is 1. And that's why they take up the same space in the width. So what I want to do then is make this one for the linear layout a 4, so it takes up more space. Now let's go into this linear layout, and we set the height to wrap the content, and then we can see the rest. Okay, so now on this first text view, I'm going to add the text there as just the A. And I'm going to explain that now, and if we go down a bit, let's make the text style bold, and let's make the text size... I think let's go a bit bigger, 48. Let's make it a 48. And then let's go to the gray gravity property and set it to center horizontal. So for every contact that we're going to have, we will start off with the contact's first character as the picture that we show on this side. So it's not really a picture, but it looks like some sort of character showing there for the specific contact. Right, let's go to the second text view there. Go to the bottom, let's set the style also to bold, and then let's set this text size also a bit bigger. Let's make it 24, maybe too big, let's make it 18. Okay, that should be fine. And now let's just move it down from the top a bit, so let's give a top margin of 10. 10 should work. Okay, so this is how every contact will display. We'll display its character there the name of the contact, and then we'll display the, uh, the email address as well as the telephone number on this text view. So let's just call this one TV char for the character. Let's call that one TV name. And let's call this one TV mail. Right, so now what we want to do next is to, well, this was now step number two. So step number one is create a custom class that will represent every element inside of your list. And then also with that, we need to have a layout that will represent it. So we've got both contact row layout, we've got contact. And now step number three is let's go and create the adapter class that goes with it. So you're going to say new Java class and let's go and create this contact adapter. So I'm going to say contact 
adapter and I normally call it the same as the class just add the word adapter next to it so you know it goes together with that one so it's contact adapter and then in this contact adapter we will go we will say extends recycler view dot adapter and then you can open it up click on it there at the top alt enter and say implement all those methods now we're going to create a few things at the top and if any of this seems weird for you you must go back to my video please where i did the contact or the adapter for the recycle view so i'm going to say private list from a uh, back endless uh, we can get a list or we can get a, uh, basically an array list so i'm going to keep this as a list and uh, the list that we want here is a list of contact objects and let's call this contacts alt enter for your import and then we will also create an interface here so i'm going to call the interface item clicked and uh, sorry interface first public interface item clicked and then we're going to create only one method for it and this will be on item clicked and we're going to accept an index value on where it was clicked in the list so if this is something that you're not used to right now please go back to my videos so i'm going to declare a variable also there at the top that says item clicked and I'm, I'm going to say this, or it's going to be an item clicked, and I'm going to set it as activity, or give it the name as activity. Because ultimately, this variable will be linked to an activity that's using this adapter. Right, so after the interface, we can now start creating this constructor. So I'm going to say public contact adapter, same name as the class. We're going to accept the context, which class is using it, so that we can set this activity. And then the second argument will be the list that will be passed in. So again, we're going to have a list of contact objects and let's call it list. Right now, inside of this constructor, we need to set the context and we need to set the list. Our list is called contacts. So I'm going to say contacts equals this list that was passed in. Then I also want to say that this activity that we declared at the top should be the context that was passed in so when we call this contact adapter we will pass in if it's the main activity main activity dot this in our case it will be contact list so we're going to pass in contact list dot this so we're actually passing in a context but it is an activity and that activity must implement item clicked so that i can convert this to item clicked so on the activity then there in your contact list activity we must remember to say implements item clicked if we don't do this, say alt enter there, and you can see implement methods and it will have this method on item clicked. So if we do not do this, and as soon as it gets to this line, it will throw me an exception because you cannot convert an activity to item clicked if it's not implementing that item clicked. So very important. So if you're going to contact adapter, then it sets the list to my contacts at the top. It sets the context to my activity. So this activity will ultimately be a link to contact list. Right, so now the next part we do is to create our own custom recycler views view holder. So this part there will be replaced by something else. So let's create that class. So we're going to say public class view holder. And we're going to say extends recycler view dot view holder. Now you can open it up there and just go and say alt enter on that create the constructor and now the rest we can add so now at the top we need to declare all of the variables that we have here or all these items that we have on the layout so it's tv char it is tv name and it is tv mail so let's go and declare them so it's text views and it's going to be tv char it's going to be tv name and it's going to be tv mail Right, and then inside of this constructor, we can now link to them. So this item view, you'll see in this method, we will link this item view to this layout. So item view is referring to this layout right now. So we're going to say on this item view, we can set up this TV char. So I'm going to say TV char equals item view, which is a link to this row layout. And on that link, we can find a view by its ID. And that view that we want to find is called TV char. And then we do the same for TV name equals again item view dot find the view by its ID r dot ID dot TV name and TV mail 
equals find the view by its id sorry first item view dot find the view by its id r dot id dot tv mail right so now we have set up all those components and if we want to have all the items in the list clickable so that when we click on it it can take us somewhere else we also need to go on this item view that was passed in on that item view we must go and set an on click listener so that we can click every item in the list and then what we do inside of this on click listener is the same as in my previous videos we're just going to go to the activity that's using it in the activity there's an on item click method so you'll remember in contact list now because we said implements item clicked it created a method at the bottom that says on item clicked and we want to pass in the index on where it was clicked so in the contact adapter we will call on item clicked and now we just need to pass in the index there so to get the index i'm going to go to my list which is contacts and i'm going to get the index of the one that was currently clicked now the, to get the one that was clicked we're going to go to this view object there dot get tag and uh, this will give you this orange warning there because we need to convert this to a contact object so it will be a contact object where it was clicked and then where it was clicked it will return or get the index of this object inside of contacts and that's the index of where it was clicked right so in this method on bind view holders where we set the tag so we will come back to this one quickly again now in your next part there we want to create a new view holder here that we want to return but this type is not correct now because we want to use this view holder so at the top we're going to set the type as our view holder so make sure it is your view holder it's not recycler view view holder it's the view holder that's part of contact adapter now so that is the type then go down and change this recycler view to your class name which is contact adapter and also the return type here change this to contact adapter dot view holder and now we are using our own view holder here right so the first thing we need to do in this method that says on create view holder is we need to make a connection to this view that's contact row layout so we're going to say view call it whatever you want equals layout inflator dot from and the context here is this view group so we're going to pass in the view group dot get context and then just move your cursor out there and you're going to put a dot and say inflate and which layout do we want to inflate well it is the r dot layout dot and that's this file contact row layout so you can search for it contact row layout second argument is a view group now there's a view group that was passed in so just pass it in and the last argument you're going to set to false to not attach it to any root and then we close it off now what do we return here and you can see we return a contact adapter view holder which means i want to return an object of this type and you can see the view holder constructor accepts a view and that's exactly what we did here so we're just going to say the new view holder and the view holder must be the contact adapters view holder and what does it accept a view so we i'm just going to pass in that v so what happens then this line makes a connection to this external layout called contact row layout that contact row layouts connection is passed into the view holder so this item view is now the connection to this file and now you it makes sense that we can go to that connection to the file and find the views by their ids right so let's go to the on bind view holder but before we do that the get item count method we need to use this method in order for this on bind view holder to know how many times to execute so our item count here will always be your list and what is saved inside of the list so it's going to be contacts dot size how many contacts is saved into the list right so let's say you've got 10 contacts on the database online then contacts size will be 10 and on bind view holder will run 10 times and every time it runs it will start at position 0 there the i and go through until position 9 if there's 10 values okay so on bind view holder in this one we're going to take hold of this view holder which is in fact the one that we created here now so when we passed in this view this view holder gets created and that's the view holder we have here as well so we're going to say on the view holder go to the item view so item view is referring to this whole layout 
for every item. And now on that item view, we're going to set the tag as the object that we are currently at. So it's going to be context.get i. So i will be where we are currently at setting the items on the list. So that tag gets set. So when we get or when we click on a specific item in the list, that tag will be retrieved there, which is just a context object. And that context object, we get the index of it. And then we pass in that index to on item clicked. So we know exactly where it was clicked. So let's just go back to your on bind view holder. The next thing we're going to do there is to set those three values now. So the first one is TV name. Let's set TV name. And we're going to call dot set text. Go to contacts dot get I get you the object dot get in this case the name will set the name. Let's go to view holder again dot TV. Let's call it mail there set text and it's going to be contacts dot get I again dot get in this case the email. Right. So let's go to view holder again. The last one there will be let me just see there we haven't done char yet. So we're going to say dot set text. And now this one is going to be a bit different. So we just want to set the starting character there of the guy's name. So I'm going to still get the name there, but I'm going to call the char at method to get the character at position zero. And that is the first character of the, the specific contact. But just remember, that's a character we needed as a string. So just add a double quotation mark. Now also at the mail one, let's get the email there. But after the email, we'll add a space and a bracket and a space. And then we will add again, go to contacts dot get I dot get. So we've got the email. Let's get the telephone number. So we put the telephone number in brackets and then we're going to add a space again and we close the bracket. Right. So this is then the whole adapter class working 100%. And if there's something that I've gone too fast with here, please go through my videos on the recycler view. I've gone through this in detail there. Right, so now we can go back to our contact list and set up this whole thing. So the three things we need is the custom class, the custom layout, and the custom adapter. And now we can go to contact list and set up everything. So remember in contact list, we've got this recycler view. It's called RV list. So let's go to contact list and set this up. So I need a recycler view there at the top. And we called it RV list. I will also need a recycler view dot adapter and let's call it my adapter so we created our own contact adapter there which we'll set to this and then we also need a recycler view dot layout manager and let's call it layout manager all right so let's set them up in the on create quickly so we'll start with the recycler view sorry we call this one tv or rv recycler view list equals find the view by its id r dot id dot rv list Right, so that's the recycler view. On the recycler view, we're also going to set the has fixed size to true for better performance. Now let's set up the layout manager. So I'm going to say layout manager equals new linear layout manager and just pass in this keyword for the context. So it's a linear layout manager. Then on the recycler view, we just set the layout manager. And the layout manager will be the one that we just created. Right, and now the next part is to set up the adapter and actually set something to that list. So this is where the back endless part now comes in. What do we need to do in order to get the data now from the online database and set it here? So the first thing you'll need is a where clause. And this where clause will help us to say what data do we want to go and extract. So we're going to set the table later on, but the where clause in this case will be basically just be we want to go to this table on back endless called contact and we want to extract all the data where the user email is equal to the user that's currently logging. So the column name there is user email. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say where the user email column and your spelling must be exactly the same is equal to. And if I want to add an email address there, I'll do this. I'll say jgjurias at gmail.com and that is how the way clause should look. So I must have an opening single quotation mark and a closing single quotation mark to compare the user email to this email.
but obviously we don't want to hard code this part there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the opening single quotation mark and then remember in our application class so we've got the contacts application class we have this back endless user there already so let's go to a contact list again and we're going to go to that user contacts application dot user and we're going to get the email there for the user that's currently logged in and then I'm going to add a plus sign and then add the single quotation mark to close it down. So it's essentially saying the same thing now. There's the opening single quotation mark, then the guy's email, and then the closing quotation mark. So this is the where clause. Now the next thing is to use the data query builder. So I'm going to use the data query builder. Let's call it query builder equals data query builder dot create. That creates a new query builder for me. On this query builder, we will need to go and set the where clause. And the where clause will now be this where clause that we created. Then we can also go to the query builder and we can set to group by. And you can see we can pass in all the different columns in the sequence that we want to have them grouped by. But in this case, we're just going to sort the data by the name column. So you remember on my online database there's a column called name that's Chuck Norris and John Rambo the name of the contact and we want to sort them or group them by that name. Right so now we are ready to go into the background and to get all those data. So we need a where clause and this query builder that sets the where clause and we, how you want to group them. Now we're going to go into the background. So I'm going to say show progress true start showing the progress after start showing the progress, we can go to that TV load and maybe set the text there also. Something like getting all contacts. Please wait. Right, so now we can go into the background. So we're going to say back endless dot and we're using the persistence libraries. And then instead of saying save like we did previously, we're going to use the of method there. And you can see it wants a table name. So I'm going to say persistence of contact is the table name but we need to add the class or the dot class there so I am going into the contact table there and I want to extract the data so let's carry on there and then after this we're going to call dot find and you can see there's a find method that just has the this data query builder and then there's a find with the data query builder and the async callback and that's the one we want to use so I need to pass in my query builder now and then the second argument is new async callback. And now it goes into the background. Look at the query builder for this specific table. And then this query builder says go and extract everything where the user email is equal to the user email or for the user that's currently logged in. So it will get all of those contacts. And after that contacts or after it's done, it's going to come back to handle response or handle fault. So in handle fault, we'll just show this toast, error fault message, And then we must remember also in the handle fault to stop showing this progress. So I'm going to set the progress to false. Now look at handle response. Handle response has got a list of contact objects now for me. And this is exactly what we did in our contact adapter. We said we will accept a list of contacts. So that made it now very easy. So if we go down, you, you will see handle response. There's my list of contacts. So what I'm going to do now is to set up this adapter. So I'm going to say my adapter equals new. And this is the adapter, contact adapter. We want to call this constructor now. Passing in the context and a list of contacts. So it's contact adapter. So we're going to say new contact adapter. And the context will be contact list dot this and the second argument will be this response so the response is a list of contact objects and then after you created the adapter you can just go to your rv list which is your recycler view and you can call set the adapter passing in my adapter then we also need to remember that we should set the progress to false here right so if we run this now it will actually work we will see the contacts in our table but one extra thing I want to add here is because we can 
basically go and click on it so if the user clicks on an item in the list we maybe want to take him to a new activity where we want to display the data so we can with an intent pass through the data you want to display but let's say you want to delete that specific uh, contact or you want to change that content contact then it, it gets a bit more complicated so what I want to do here is to add another variable in my application class so we've got a user variable there and I'm going to use public static and let's create a contact there so i'm going to say contact or list of contacts so let's say list contact and let's call this contacts and you can just use alt enter for your import and now we have or we can have a, a link to that list of contacts from our database in the application class so if you go back to your contact list right here where we get this contact list we can go to the application class. We call it contacts application dot. So we've got user there and we've got contacts. And we're going to set the context now to this response. So now instead of using response here, we can go to the contacts application and we can use that context there. So it will be the same thing. Right, so now we have a link to this context that was returned from the database. And when the user then clicks on an item in the list, we can take him to a new activity. And we still have a hold of that specific contact that was clicked. Why? Because we have the index there. So the only thing that we need to pass through here is the index. And then we can refer to the contacts application class as contacts, that list, and go and get it at that specific index. Right, so let's test this application quickly and see if we can get the data from the database. Right, so I am back at uh, the website just to go and have a look at what is currently in the contact table. So you'll see in the contact table I have Chuck Norris and John Rambo. So I will see them also sorted. So you can see I'm still logged in as jjurias at gmail.com. So I will get only these two contacts. Well, it's everything here and we can change maybe a few now there to just test it out. So if I click on contact list now, it will go and get all the contacts and there I have it. I've got Chuck Norris, Chuck at Norris, and there's the telephone number. And I have John Rambo with his email address and his telephone number. So let's create another one online here. So instead of using the app, let's use Peter at Pollock.com. Let's use the name Peter Pollock. Let's add his telephone number there. I'm going to add my same email address there again. And that's fine. Let's run it in the app again. Or let's just refresh this activity by going back and say contact list. And let's see what happens now. Now I have Peter Pollock there as well. But if I remove or I change something here, let's take out the S there, then it will not be part of it because that email address isn't correct. So contact list, and I'll still see just only Chuck Norris and John Rambo for me. So in this way, you can separate your user's data, but using everything in the same table. Right, so I think this is working nicely. We have seen now in this video how we can get the data online from the database and display it in a list. So in the next videos to follow, we'll see how we can click then on one of these items, take it to a new activity where we will be able to edit that, use it to call or to email, or delete one of the contacts. So I hope you've learned from this video. See you in the next one.